Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and today I'm going to show you how to build a super simple toddler floor bed from just some basic 2x4s and some dowel rods. Now, this is actually a twin size, but you could easily modify this to build a crib size as well. So if you're ready to get building, let's go. By the way, just so you know, I don't have a twin size mattress to stage this with, so I just threw a bunch of pillows up under here and threw a comforter on top. So just pretend like it looks like a normal mattress and not a huge lumpy mess under here. Okay, now let's get building. A friend of mine recently asked me to build her little boy a big boy bed so that she could move him out of his crib. But since he's still fairly young, she didn't want anything that she would have to worry about him rolling out of. So I built her this super simple floor bed and used some dowel rods as side rails. I've got all the plans and dimensions for a twin size version linked in the description and I'll share the building process with you in this video. I'm going to be building this entire project from just simple two by fours and some three quarter inch diameter poplar dowels. I used seven two by four by 92 and five eighths inch pine studs. Eight footers would definitely work too, but the stud length boards were over $3 cheaper than the full 96 inch boards when I bought them, so I just got those instead. And I also used 14 three quarter inch diameter by 48 inch long poplar dowel rods. The total lumber cost ended up being roughly $100, which I really didn't think was too bad for this project. Normally, I would actually rip the rounded edges off of my two by fours before I started building with them, but because this is a kid's bed, I kind of like the idea of the rounded corners, so there's nothing really like super sharp. Now you'll notice in this bed frame design, these top pieces are not full two by fours. I actually ripped these down into a one and a half and a two inch wide piece. So what I'm actually going to do is cut down some of these two by fours into one and a half inch wide and then two inch wide about um, pieces for the top, but I'm gonna use the full two by fours for the bottom. If you don't have a table saw, you don't have to rip these down. You could actually purchase two by twos and uh, two by threes. It was a little bit cheaper for me to buy the two by four since I have a table saw. But like I said, you can exchange these pieces for um, pre-cut two by twos and two by threes instead if you don't have a table saw. I began the build by rough cutting the two by four pieces to length for the top so that I could rip them down on the table saw. I cut a 76 inch long back piece, two 43 inch long side pieces, and a 48 inch long piece for the front. Then I adjusted my table saw rip fence to two inches and ran the boards through to get a two inch and a one and a half inch ish wide piece from each. I set the two inch pieces to the side as they will be the very last piece that I add to this build. So I've got my two inch piece that's gonna make the lip that goes around the edge. And then I've got my one and a half inch piece that is actually going to be where I insert the dowel holes. I began assembling the side panels first. Again, all of the dimensions can be found in the plans linked in the description. But I cut a two by four and the one and a half inch piece ripped from the table saw earlier to about 35 inches long. If you don't have a table saw and didn't rip these pieces, you can purchase pre-cut 2x2s two two to use as this top piece instead. Then I marked out where my dowels will go between these pieces. To do this, I laid these out on the workbench and marked the center first. For each side panel of this bed to make things easier, I used an odd number of dowels so that I could start in the center and work my way out from there, marking where my dowels would go. Once I found the center, I used this handy Craig multi-mark tool for making the rest of my marks. I set it to mark a three quarter inch offset and drew a center line down the middle of these pieces. Then I set it to four and a quarter inches and made several marks out from this center point, all four and a quarter inches apart. I clamped the top and bottom pieces together and then transferred these marks to each piece so that they would match perfectly. Once all of my dowel locations were marked, I used a three quarter inch Forstner bit to drill out each location. I just drilled until the cutter head was flush with the top of the board for each hole. You could use a stop collar to be extra precise if you wanted, but it's not super critical. These holes ended up being about three eighths inch deep.
Once all the holes were drilled, I pulled out my pocket hole jig and drilled pocket holes into the ends of the 2x4 and one on each end across the top side of the 2x2 piece. Then I sanded these pieces really well. I cut my dowels to roughly 16 inches long. Now the dowels were exactly 48 inches long, so in order to get three equal length dowels from each piece, I had to cut them slightly under 16 inches to account for the blade curve when making the cuts. So these all ended up being about 15 and 15 sixteenths inches long. I removed the stickers and sanded the dowels before assembling because it's always easier to sand prior to all of the pieces being together. Then I applied wood glue into the holes and inserted the dowels. During this first glue up, I applied wood glue onto the tops of the dowels to install the top piece. However, I learned that this was not the easiest way to go about doing this, and you'll see later that I changed my ways on the rest of the sides. Once this side piece was together, I used a large clamp to press everything together and checked for a consistent height from side to side. Now, depending on the length that you cut your dowels and the depth that you drill your holes, your overall size may vary some, but mine ended up being about 20 inches. So I cut two pieces of 20 inch long two x four to add to the side panels. I used pocket hole screws to assemble these two x fours on each end. And once this first side panel was done, I repeated because the other side is exactly the same. Then I started on the back piece. The back piece is exactly like the sides, only it's longer and won't have the two by fours on the sides. So I began by cutting down a two by two and a two by four to about 76 inches long. I found the center of each of these just like I did for the sides earlier, and then I used my Craig Multimark tool to mark the center line and make marks four and a quarter inches apart. I drilled out the holes just like before and cut the dowels just like before as well. However, in this case, I didn't add pocket holes and I skipped right to sanding and gluing. You'll notice this time that instead of flipping the holes with the glue upside down on the dowels, I flipped the dowels into the holes with the glue. It was still a little challenging and took some convincing with a rubber mallet, but at least the glue wasn't dripping all over the place in the process. I found it helped to work my way from one side to the other and use the rubber mallet to just tap everything in place. Once this back panel was together, I pulled out the side panels and attached all three sides together. For this, I used temper screws. You may have seen these before in a few of my recent projects. I used them for a project for the first time a while back and I may have gotten addicted. They add strength, but also a really nice decorative detail. They also kept this assembly process super easy. So I used these two at the bottom and one at the top to attach the side panels onto the back panel like shown here. These screws are pretty big, so I do recommend pre-drilling to help prevent the wood from splitting when driving them. Now all that's left is the front. So I moved this section out of the way to begin assembling the very last side. So for the front section, I'm gonna have a two by four that goes all the way across the entire front. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to add some more rails and I wanted the rails to come into the bed 48 inches. So by the time that I add this, this length is 48. So I cut this 44 and a half. So I'm gonna line up the edges of these boards over here on the right side, but I'm gonna find the center of the short board and then make my marks out from there. 
So for this front section, since these pieces aren't the same length, I found the center of the shorter top side and measured my dowel locations from there. Then I transferred these locations to the right side of the bottom 2x4 piece so that the holes will line up properly. Again, I glued and installed these dowels, clamped it down, and then I cut a 2x4 to add to the left of these rails. I completely forgot to drill the pocket holes before assembling, so I used this handy clamp-on jig to drill a hole at the top of the 2x2 piece and two holes in the bottom edge of this 2x4 that will go on the left side. Then I screwed this piece in place. Once the front panel was assembled, I brought the rest of the bed back out and used timber screws again to attach the front panel between the two sides. The final pieces were the two inch rails that I added along the tops. Now at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that if you didn't have a table saw, you could use two by twos and two by threes instead of ripping down two by fours like I did. So this is where you would use those two by threes if you went that route. Since I ripped these, they are only two inches wide, but two by threes would actually be two and a half inches wide. These are basically just decorative pieces added to smooth out the top and cover up the pocket holes. So the difference in width wouldn't really matter structurally. You just need to pay attention to the measurements and cut to fit these pieces to length. So I trimmed these down to fit and then I used wood glue and two and a half inch wood screws to secure them from the bottom side. I started at the back and kept all of the inside edges of the bed flush, so the overhang falls on the outside of the bed frame. Then I added the left side, then the front, and finally the right side. Since this is a kid's bed, I sanded out and rounded over any sharp edges left at the end of the build. Then I applied a few coats of clear coat, sanding well between each one. And finally, it was complete. Now with this particular bed design, the mattress is sitting directly on the floor. Now, if you didn't want the mattress to be directly on the floor, you could definitely run some slats between the front and the back bottom two by four here to set the mattress on. And that way it would be maybe an inch or two up off the floor. In this case, we just left the mattress sitting directly on the floor. My friend wanted it that way, so that's what we did. But like I said, you could add slats if you wanted. It turned out pretty well, but I'm sure this would definitely look a little bit better with an actual mattress inside instead of my pile of pillows. I made the inside dimensions here 39 inches by 76 inches, which allows for a half inch wiggle room on each side of a standard twin size mattress. So it should fit snug, but also leave a little bit of room to tuck in bedding. If you're interested in building your own, be sure to head over to the plans linked below for a list of tools, materials, dimensions, diagrams, and step-by-step -step instructions to walk you through the build. And if you've enjoyed this video and want to see what's next, I'd love if you'd subscribe to my channel and follow along. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, happy building.